Hello, I am Dr. Mohua Bhattacharji. Today we will be explaining how to define the Pareto optimality situation with an Edgeworth box diagram. Generally, if we consider the uh, PPC curve, the production possibility curve, then we can automatically say that, that anything which is within this area is Pareto non-optimal. That means that you have not reached the brim, the upper limit. So, on anything which in this limit, it can be considered as a Pareto optimality. So, if we move from this, suppose this R and this point to this is movement from R to S is Pareto optimality. That is a simple point, simple way of discussing or stating that what is Pareto optimality with the help of PPC. But with the same, the same argument or the same discussion can be made with the help of an Edgeworth box diagram. Edgeworth was also someone who was very much keen to work on the welfare economics and made a very good contribution on the welfare world which uh, and out of which the, he is considered to be the best contribution was made in explaining the Pareto optimality situation one of the best in the Pareto optimality situation here what it is happening so you, we, we generally we take this two dimensional diagram a single we take two um, one a single axis of uh, and this two axis with a one origin we generally we take this determining one consumer but Edward is doing what he's taking this as a one consumer and this is another consumer and so OB is a center point or it is the origin of a consumer B and A is the origin of the consumer a. As we, I said that it is a 2 into 2 into 2 model, so we will have to consider all the time 2 consumer, 2 producer and also 2 goods which these 2 producers will. So in the Pareto optimal situation, this 2 consumer is eating entirely the 2 goods which has been produced by the producer and the 2 producer is also selling their entire goods to these 2 consumers. So that's why this entire all the goods are being exhausted by of the producers and producer is also in the equilibrium, consumer is also in the equilibrium and the entire market is in equilibrium. So it is generally been considered that the welfare economics equilibrium can be explained with the general equilibrium model of walrus. So that is a something which is beyond your scope but to understand this so that's why we have taken OA and OB are the two uh, um, origins and suppose this ICAA1 and ICA2 is the indifference curve of the individual A and determining the satisfaction of the individual A and ICB1 and ICB2 is the taking the origin B or uh, uh, person B, his indifference curve has been reflecting here, which represents the consumption. So now at this point, this is a non-optimal point and it is considered this to be an optimal point. Then why? The question is this, if the person is somewhere in the F and if we consider the redistribution of the resources of the consumption of the good, he can go either towards Q or he can go towards P. In the F, we can see that he is in the ICA1 and he is in ICB1. So, if you see, this is the point ICB1 and this is the point ICBA1. So, now if he goes from this point to this point, he can remain on ICB1 but he is going to ICA2. So, this is called Pareto non-optimal to Pareto optimal situation because he has this person, the, the, <coughs> the a person has gone to the higher indifference curve and we know that higher indifference curve represents higher level of satisfaction but the B remained in the same position. So you have increased your welfare by without reducing any other's welfare. So this is something which is called to be the optimal situation or it is considered to be the more efficient situation. So this is the Pareto non-optimal situation and this is a Pareto optimal situation. And similarly the point F to the P also can be shown that here where what will happen? The B person will be improving, A is remaining the same. So this is also considered to be the welfare situation. And this area is considered to be the core or the area in which the transaction takes place. Now, how does it take place? Why it takes place? How, this is a something different discussion. But this is the final equilibrium or the P or the Q. This is also the point when we join together, we get the contract curve. So this is in this point what is happening we see that the slope of the indifference curve of individual A and individual B is equating together and the slope is nothing but the marginal rate of substitution of the two commodity X and Y of the individual 1 and 2. So if we can write that at this point when the slopes are equal the MRS marginal rate of substitution of X and Y of individual A 
is equal to marginal rate of substitution of x and y of b. So we have assumed that x and y are the two commodities of the individual, uh, two commodities which the consumers consume, and the consumers are a and b. And so in the intersection, uh, in the tangency point of these two indifference curve, together shows that the marginal rate of substitution of these two goods of both the individual is to get is equal to each other and so this is the point of the welfare economics or which is considered to be the uh, Pareto optimal point in which it is not possible and it is considered to be there now the point P is one of the equilibrium point one of the Pareto optimal point Q is another Pareto optimal point this way we can show the Pareto optimality we have concentrated right now only on the consumption side but it is not necessary that it will be only on the consumption side because it is 2 into 2 into 2 model we have to take care of all the markets we have to take care of the producers market we have to take care of the consumers market and we also have to take care when these two markets coincides together interacts together so that's why this is a simple discussion which we have made on the on the definition of welfare economics and in understanding the welfare economics which we can take in depth discussion while discussing the marginal conditions of Pareto optimality